Okay, here we are with Unit L Review Capacitance Part 3. I'm going to try and get this done in 3. I'm hoping to get, get it done in 3. Here's my living room. Yeah, we have a lot of books. All right. Here we go. Unit L uh, Part 3. All right, so um, this time we're going to detach the, the, the battery from the capacitor. So the battery is detached. We're going to pull the plates apart to 2D. What happens to all these quantities again? What's going to happen to C, Q, V, E, and U? Go ahead and pause and try it. Okay, so um, when you do pull these apart, C is going to go to half. So C, C will be halved. But um, the battery is detached, so the Q can't go anywhere. So this is the same. The voltage then is, since the voltage is Q over C, if that's the same and that's half, the voltage is increased by 2. It's doubled. Because this is, if I put a half right here, it's le and that's the same, then that's going to double. Okay, the electric field then, if the voltage doubles, um, the E will stay the same. Uh, that's because uh, there's two ways to look at this. E is sigma over epsilon naught, and since Q hasn't changed, how could sigma change? Q is the same as before, so sigma is the same as before. And um, the other thing is that um, if voltage, if electric field is voltage over D, then the voltage is doubled, so put a 2 there, and so is the 2. So if there's a 2V over 2D, that's the same as just V over D. As far as energy goes, um, the Q is the same. So I'm going to use the equation that says uh, this is 1 half 1 over C Q squared. So they both have the same Q. And so if I double the, the C, excuse me, if I half the C, that's going to double the energy. So the energy is doubled. All right, moving right along here. All right, now um, we have a, capaci um, a, a battery hooked up to a 3 microfarad capacitor and a 6 microfarad capacitor. So you charge them up, and let's do this in two parts. Charge them up. What will be the... Um, I'd like you to tell me what the charge will be on each of these. Okay, we're back. Um, so... This is going to have the same charge as this because they're in series. See, these electrons, they came from here. And so um, to have the same charge, this is going to need three times the volts as that. And so I'll break this into three. Excuse me. Excuse me. To have the same charge, this needs twice as many volts as this. So I'll break this into three parts and give two of them to this and one of those parts to that. So that means that the charge on this one is 12 microcoulombs, and the charge on this one is 12 microcoulombs. All right. So um, the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to take and put the positive plate of this. We detach them from the battery. We're going to put the positive plate of this one connected to the positive plate of this one. And then the negative and the negative, and then I'm going to connect these. Could you tell me what you think the final charge will be on here? What will be the final charge on here? Okay, go ahead and, and try that. All right, we're back. When you connect these, um, there was 12 microcoulombs on this top plate and 12 microcoulombs on this top plate. So that means that uh, this whole piece of metal here had 24 microcoulombs. Now, do you think it's going to split that up evenly? I don't think so. I think that since the 6 microfarad is, is twice as good at storing charge as the 3, I'm thinking that it's going to take twice the charge. And so split this up into three parts and give two of those parts to this guy and give one part to this guy. So there'll be 16 microcoulombs on, this, on, on each of these plates and 8 microcoulombs on each of those plates. Going on. Okay. 
we have a, a battery uh, V and um, two capacitors, C1 and C2. But C1 is equal to C2 in value. It's got the same capacitance, C1 and C2. Okay, what is the energy stored in C1? Can you tell me what the energy stored in C1 is? Okay, well, the energy stored in C1, since these are the same, they're going to have the same charge, and they'll need the same volts. So the volts across here will be V over 2, and the volts across here will be V over 2. And so the energy stored in C1 is going to be equal to 1 half, um, 1 over, uh, how about 1 half CV squared. So that's going to be equal to 1 half C1 times V over 2 squared. So that'd be V squared over 4 when you square it. I squared V over 2. I squared that and I get V squared over 4. So that's going to be, uh, it's hard, hard to fit this in, but it's going to be 1 eighth C1 times V squared. That's what it's going to be. 1 eighth C1 times V squared. Okay, second question. Now, if you put an electron of mass of mass Me and charge E at C1's negative plate, so let's see which one of these is negative. This would be positive. This would be negative. And I wish I could zoom in here like I do with the DocuCam, because if I did, I'd show you this little electron sitting there, and we're going to let it go, and it's going to zip over to here. It's going to zip over to the positive plate. And we, what we want to know is how fast will it be traveling when it reaches the positive plate in terms of these quantities, V, C1, and all that good stuff. How fast is it going to be going when it reaches the positive plate? So go ahead and try that. Okay, so we're back. And so this is how this works. So this is a... Sometimes people think that you can take the, the total energy. This is an E equals E prime. But I want you to know that the total energy in that capacitor did not get put in that electron. When that electron gets to the other side, that capacitor has pretty much the same energy as it had before. Maybe a smidge less because the electron's over there. But it's not like you took all the energy and put it into that electron. However, we can say that the voltage, now the voltage across that C1's plate is V2, V over 2, um, times um, the charge on the electron. That is the energy that was lost by the electron, V2 over, times E. That is the energy lost by the electron, and that turns into one-half the mass of the electron times the V of the electron squared. This is voltage. That's velocity. So we can get rid of a 2, bring the ME on the other side, and so it's V over VE over M, the mass of an electron, square root it. That's what the speed is of the electron. All right. You know what? I'm going to just make another uh, a fourth video. that I, I There's no way I can fit this last stuff in in the time remaining, but it will be a short video in any case. All right, see you then.